Mary Meat, Annie here. This video in the stone casting series is about the stone chrysocolla. It's a favorite stone of mine. You will find when you are working with stones that some appear to be particularly strong allies of yours. They bring out something in you, they remind you of something you need to know, they balance something that in your nature needs to be balanced. You will find you are drawn to carry them. They will influence your behavior because you're holding in your heart the meaning of them. You may use them in spell work. You may use them on your altar. You may use chips of them in magical potions, brews, even incenses. Along the way there will be some that just will make it clear to you, just like any other guide that we come across. You need me. You might not even know why you need them. It's part of the lesson going forward that you will discover. Chrysocolla has always been that stone for me. It's known as the stone of peace. It is not, in a way, the end result of peace. It is the work of peace. What needs to be done. When there are two extremes, emotional extremes, political ex extremes, arguments, whether it's two or more people, and sometimes even when it's an argument within yourself. The power of Chrysocolla is summed up in two words, reconciliation and comfort. And that is a really important thing to hold in mind about this stone. If you hold no other thoughts about it when it comes to its aspects of being the peace worker, reconciliation and comfort. Reconciliation is coming to that middle place where it had seen there were two very disparate views. Things just didn't look like they could come together. Reconciliation is the power of each party involved making the necessary sacrifices to come to a common ground. So the first aspect of the power of Chrysocolla is reconciliation. The willingness to give up not hang on to something past when it should be hung on to because there's a realization that in the end what, peer, uh, what appears as sacrifice is coming to a middle ground that indeed all parties end up benefiting from. And therein lies the second powerful word, comfort. When Chrysocolla is invoked as a peacemaking philosophy, approach, tactic, the end result, after each party making appropriate sacrifices to come to middle ground, is each party will be in a good place. They will like the end result. They will be comfortable with it. It may be different than that firmly held opinion they were entrenched in as the process began. But the important part of this is, in the end, after reconciliation, all parties feel at ease and they are aware of the fact they benefited from the process and indeed are in a better place than where they started. Chrysocolla is interesting because when you read the histories about it as far as its elemental alliances, most traditionally it is seen as a stone of water. I didn't learn it originally as a stone of water. I learned it as a stone of earth. When I was learning about the stones, there were, well, there probably were a few books of correspondences, but not many, and not very in-depth. And I didn't have anybody else's opinion to go by. I basically had to go by the opinion of my teacher, and in that case, it was also circle mates and their experience with the stones that I was learning about, because stones were very important to that first circle, and that's where I first started studying them. So for years and years and years, I saw it as a creature of Earth. And that was because of its, its sense of patience that over time, these stressful situations and opposing viewpoints, the things that keep us from being at peace, that over time, which is a power of the element of Earth, things will be worked out. And the steady, balancing, rock-like aspect of conciliation and reconciliation was also seen as the power of the stone coming from the element of earth. But as you can see, the power of it is a water element, and that's what you're going to see mostly when you read up modern correspondences on it, is the power of emotion brought to a place of 
willingness to move away from stubbornness, from hanging on to something which may or may not be outdated. In other words, the ability at an emotional level to understand why we are so connected to a viewpoint and a stance, and the ability of also emotion to take us away from that, to soften us, to open us up, to feel different things. You cannot get to a place of reconciliation without being deeply involved at the emotional level. So you can see that when it comes to emotions, Chrysocola is so much a creature of water. But as I learned it, as a creature of earth, it has to do with time, patience, and steadfastness, the ability to stay with something until it's resolved. So there are two very important elements at play here for me when it comes to this stone. Chrysocolla encourages us to understand there is power in temperance, in the considered approach to expressing our emotions, whether it's anger or frustration, anything that puts us at odds with something or someone. It is wisdom, in a sense, again tying it into the earth element, that temperance of extremes, even within ourselves, is a place of benefit and balance. It doesn't mean that we didn't experience that wild swing of opinion or emotion. It means that when we get to that place of being willing to be reconciled to, in a way, it's not always about us, it's not always about our emotions, our reactions. It is about more than that a great deal of the time. And when we step out of what we hold on, perhaps to a bit more dearly than we should, we get to the place of being able to align emotion and action to a more steadfast place of our power of being reconciled, making changes, making sacrifices, getting to a new place. It's the opposite of stubbornness. It is releasing attachment to something at the emotional level. It's a stone which especially teaches us about compromise and cooperation at the communal level in dealing with everything that is in addition to ourself. At the personal level, it represents wisdom that rises from within, that is heart or emotion driven. In our lives, the times we are the most emotionally vulnerable, there's always a learning from that experience. And that learning, every time we go through it, adds to who we are as a being of wisdom. Grisicola does not represent wisdom that comes to us in the way of something we are told or taught or observe. It is that which rises from within us, usually due to our life experiences. Again, this ties it into earth, time, and life, and the passages of life, and water. The feelings, the intimate, vulnerable feelings of, a, of an ever-evolving spiritual being. The wisdom of Chrysocola at that personal level is, think of the expression which I'm sure you've heard, think before you speak. Chrysocola is feel before you speak. It's allowing yourself to be with the emotion of something. Feel it first and then speak. Think of the power of in the moment that you were angry, the kind of words that will come out of your mouth. You didn't stop and feel them. You were just on the spot expressing your emotions. The power of Chrysocola is to feel those emotions, to internalize them, to reconcile them to a greater picture, and then to speak of them. It doesn't make less of them. It actually makes them deeper and more meaningful. When you speak, you know where your words are coming from. Chrysocolla is known as a stone of wisdom also. Again, in a very specific way. It is the power of teaching by example. That what you have experienced in life, very earth, becomes important in what it can teach. Of course you learn it yourself. You teach yourself from your life experiences, don't you? 
but you also can share experiences with others. Now here's where it gets interesting. We all know people who, because they've had a certain experience, preach of it as if they then know the answer to a situation when someone else is experiencing something similar. That is not the power of Chrysocolla, because that lacks humility. And the emotional balance of Chrysocolla, when it comes to teaching by example, is never saying, it was this way for me, therefore it is how it will be for you, or I had an experience of this, therefore I know truth. It's not about that. It's about knowing that we all go through life experiencing things, and we benefit from learning of others' experiences as well as sharing ours. Not in the sense of preaching, in the sense of leading by example and te teaching by example. You would learn a lot more about me if we had no YouTube relationship at all and you saw how I lived my life. I dare say you'd know everything you needed to know about me. And at my age, and having gone through an experience or two, 60 years probably means that there are people who could benefit by seeing the way I have dealt with situations here or there in my life. And it also means that same wisdom, that source of wisdom, is realizing others, from the child to the senior, can influence you, me, the same way. It's never teaching by example in I know better. It is teaching by example in living your life in accord with something that others will see and react to. It's a wisdom stone, but not in preaching sense, not even in officially teaching, but in living your life in some way that you will inspire others. And because you come from that place, you are very aware of the fact the exchange is others will inspire you as much, if not more. So here come some of the correspondences of Chrysocolla, the general attributes. Calm in the face of turbulence. Earth and water balanced. It's especially good in balancing extremes of emotion that come from the element of air and the element of fire. That makes sense, balanced out by earth and water. It eases anxiety, fear, and guilt. And this is the power of comfort. That no matter the changes or the sacrifices or the shift in perspective, the giving up of something dearly held on to, no matter what has had to happen, that the end result is a place of comfort, of knowing it is a good place to be. And it is a source of wisdom from silence, from the internal place that I was talking about. Not from gaining facts and figures, collecting information or processing data, but the wisdom that comes from emotional experiences, truly from the place of emotional vulnerability. Personal attributes of Chrysocolla, those which are within the physical and emotional body of yourself. It teaches discretion. It teaches that, that sometimes if you wait the time it takes to live with the emotion of something, to let the water element in Chrysocolla be balanced by the earth element in Chrysocolla, sometimes things don't have to be said you have the power of holding wisdom within yourself, in another way of saying. In that sense, it's about inner strength, and it's about patience. There's no quick answer in the world of Chrysocolla. It's a process that you follow to arrive at a calm end result. It has the power of impacting your self-love. In a way, coming to a place of respecting and loving yourself is the, the place of comfort that you have with yourself. It requires a process of reconciliation, of really coming to know all the aspects of who you are and bringing them all to a place of comfort. Even within ourselves, we balance out those extremes and make modifications and make changes and come to a place of self-love. A reminder again that at the personal level, it's the wisdom we gather through life from our personal experiences, and specifically our emotional experience of those things. 
we get insight into ourselves out of a place of silence when we talk about the power of this stone. And in the place of silence, in the earth tomb in a way, which is Chrysocolla, that's where words are formed. Being aware when we are about to express ourselves, where those words are coming from, is very much a power of this stone. An aspect of this stone which is very traditional, which might at first seem like it is outside of the things I've mentioned so far, one of the personal powers of Chrysocolla is the comfort in staying at home. This is an interesting one to explore. We talk about whether we are introverted or extroverted personalities, where we get our energy from. If we use myself as an example, every time I take one of those silly personality tests, it says I'm an extrovert. I am not by any means an extrovert. I may appear that way because I have a pretty high level of self-confidence and I enjoy being around others, but I don't get anything in the way of energy from that. The energy that fuels me, Annie, personally, is the energy from the quiet, from when I am alone, the inner experience of who I am. Chris Acola reminds those of us that get our personal fuel from that, that it is good. It is the way we are. We don't have to feel guilty about the fact we like our withdrawn time, that we can enjoy our company and our companionship with others, but we are fine if we understand the power of Chris Acola at saying that, and now it's enough, now I need to go to my quiet, to my place of withdrawal in a way, to the cave, to the home. And another aspect of the stone, which at first might seem not aligning to things I've said so far, is the power of using it when you have a creative block. The specific correspondence says writer's block. And you can understand when you are frozen in the act of writing, and many of you I'm sure know what I'm talking about. Reconciliation. Getting to a place of the things that are bopping around in your head that can be at extreme with each other. Getting to a place of reconciliation releases that kind of block. I have found over the years, especially when I'm doing castings for other people who are artistic by nature, it works the same way for those who are having an artistic block. A place of internal reconciliation which frees you. A very interesting aspect of what it is, this whole concept of Reconciliation at the intimate, personal level is something that's very interesting as a meditation. Outward and community attributes of Chrysocolla. Teaching in both a formal and an informal way. So the teaching is not something that is dry, it is something that is shaded by experience, but with the wisdom of not making that experience be, if it's this way for me, that it must be so for you. And in the reverse, when you're listening to the experience of another, you're not thinking, oh, it was that way for them, therefore it should be for me. It's insight because of experiences that each of us have that becomes a way of teaching and guiding and assisting each other along the way. I love this aspect of it, and I mentioned it in the personal attributes. My Nana was big on silence is golden. And by that, she did not mean we don't speak, we don't share our thoughts. She basically was, in her way, linking to the phrase I used earlier, feel, before thinking, that it's not always necessary to put words to everything that runs through our hearts and our minds. Living with it at wisdom level first. We have a better instinct of what can be said and what just may remain equally powerful if it is unsaid. The stone obviously carries a power in community of respect, empathy, and compassion. The understanding that there will always be a difference of opinions, slight or extreme, that that is the way it is and it should be that way, that we're not one big same person. And out of that, knowing that you equally have the right to the fullness of your beliefs and opinions and emotions. So does another. And the power of coming to a place 
if needed, to be where you're both comfortable. If releasing certain things and sacrificing certain things at the communal level benefits you both in the end, it's the power of Chrysocolla. Summing the power of Chrysocolla in community would be to say, willingness, willingness to compromise for the greater good. That there is often something more important than any of our dearly held individual stances and opinions. Spiritual and magical attributes for Chrysocolla. A lot of attunement to earth, that whole aspect of patience and reconciliation has to do with time, and time is a function of earth. It is strength when seen from the perspective of taking the time to nurture something. Again, time is a very important part of it. It's about intuition because when we are exploring the place of wisdom, that internal wisdom, it's the place that some of our greatest magical workings will ever come from, the what we know. It's also at the wisdom level, understanding that wisdom is the collective of what we all know and what we all have known. The collective consciousness, the collective unconsciousness, the sum of wisdom at the sense of greater than any one of us. Indeed, wisdom at the level of Sophia, at spiritual level. It's about strength of character. This is a water power. It's not the strength of character which as earth might be that of standing stones and roots firmly planted in the ground. It is the strength of character which knows to give it over, give it up, compromise, knowing that you benefit from it. Remember, we never forget comfort. The end result is a place of knowing it's a better place to be. Chrysocolla is a powerful stone for all of the gods of wisdom. Or when we are seeking the wisdom aspect of any of the gods we work with. As pagans, we don't petition our gods for favor. We do ask for inspiration. And very often we ask to know something, to understand something. How often, when you have felt the urge to reach out to your gods, has it been because you wanted to understand something? For some reason, it was beyond your understanding at the moment. All of the gods have in their power for us, the power of Chrysocolla. Think of the wisdom that they hold by experience. What they demonstrate to us in the way their mythology is, the way they have, in a way, lived their story through mythology. If I want to reach out to a particular deity in workings, I will often have my Chrysocolla spear on my altar. As a way to make it clear, I'm looking for your wisdom. I'm looking to see in the heart of your wisdom so that I can understand a bit myself. Health attributes. Like with most of the stones, you're going to find a long, long list of health attributes. And I have a paper for that because I would never remember all of these, but there are a lot of them. In fact, probably as many as any of the stones for Chrysocolla. Arthritis, asthma, emphysema, muscles, muscle cramps, pneumonia, spasms, tension, tension headaches, protection during pregnancy and childbirth, increase, and increasing productivity of healthy cells. I'm going to say from my personal experience that when it comes to health, when it comes to Chrysocolla, if it is you or someone you're doing a working for who is experiencing tension, stress, mood swings, depression, and there is a reason behind it that is a physical reason or an emotional reason which can be addressed, Chrysocolla is almost always telling that person that compromise is involved. That we're probably hanging on to something too strongly and therefore we are causing health problems because of that. And the other thing which I find important health-wise with Chrysocolla is, and it comes again back to its power of reconciliation. 
The power of it when it comes to healing is not destroying the thing which is out of alignment or diseased. It doesn't work on the disease or what's out of alignment. It works instead on increasing the healthy cells that fight off illness and disease and the inherent power within that of when our reconciliation in our body and in our emotional attitudes seeks to balance the extreme of dishealth or dis-ease in some way, the balance to that is an increase of health and ease. Bringing us again physically at the place of health and the wellness of our bodies and our minds a place of comfort. I always share at the end of each of these interpretations the basic things that I have as a short list of what to consider when Chrysocola comes up in a reading for you. That I'm actually going to be using my notes for so I don't forget to mention it. Remember that it is the stone of peace and harmony, but remember it is because of the power of reconciliation and comfort. If either of those things are not present, Another stone could impact peace, but it is not the power of Chrysocola without reconciliation and comfort. Another way of putting it is conciliation and reassurance. Another nice way of looking at that. It's a good stone for healing after being hurt. In other words, we are experiencing an extreme of emotion. We need to reconcile it. It stabilizes the energy of the home and those within it. The power of reconciliation and comfort. What is home at the power level, if not a place of comfort, that safe haven we all need? Keeping calm in stressful situations. Clarity of teaching and sharing information and receiving information. And it is the stone of unconditional love. The understanding that there are within us and in our dealings with the world extremes, they're not going to go away easily. In fact, they don't even necessarily go away. But that place of compromise brings us back to a place of heart center, water, and love. I hope you have the chance to experience some of the powers of Chrysocola in your workings. I wish you mirth and reverence. Merry part.